Well, maybe I can use the time to introduce myself uh, until uh, <coughs> so the time won't be wasted. So my name is Albert Swan Sigurdsson and I'm Icelandic, but I have lived in Finland for uh, 13 years total. First in Helsinki, where I was studying at the Helsinki University. I studied Mantiede, as, as you know. <laughs> and uh, then I uh, moved back to Iceland and was working for six years for the Environment Agency there. And uh, we decided to move back. And then I moved to Viala, of all places. And uh, so I kind of... Uh, have experienced both the small town and the big town in Finland for some years. Um, yeah, so that was my name and uh, <coughs> since I moved to Iceland I kind of became involved with the pirate party there. Um, <laughs> There. So these are just some uh, numbers that you can chew on while I'm talking. So the Icelandic uh, Pirate Party <coughs> was uh, established in 2012 and uh, the first pirates, they were only a few and then when they went into the first uh, uh, election there was ar around 30 pirates I think uh, act active in the Pirate Party. And they had this kind of typical uh, I, uh, pirate um, ideologies, ideologist, <coughs> like a copyright policy and, uh, and all kinds of justice of this and that. And uh, by uh, 2014, or, or yeah, at the end of 2013, they had around uh, uh, 30, well, between 30 and 50 different uh, policies which they had uh, voted on in the electronic uh, system and uh, so the majority of votes would mean that the policy which somebody had uh, discussed and wrote uh, would be uh, uh, become the policy of the Icelandic pirates. And uh, when I joined the movement in 2014 uh, there was uh, around 50 policies and uh, to make, uh, since I'm kind of curious and al analytical, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that right now I'm working for the Statistics Institute in Iceland, so I can be very anal when it comes to that. Uh, so my first thing when I had uh, started working with the Paris was to make a matrix out of these uh, 50 different policies and to try to make sense of what have they done, why are they, you know, why are they interested in this and not that and, and as soon as I had put up this kind of matrix which was kind of tabular then I could also see what was missing from the, so I could do like kind of a gap analysis of where, where some topics were missing for instance I found out that uh, there was nothing on transport, nothing on energy issues and uh, so I kind of became active in those uh, uh, issues which had not been discussed thoroughly. And it also happened that they, these were my kind of my specialities in, in some ways. Um, so in the end of, uh, well now, currently, we have around 80 different policies about all kinds of things, like I said before. And uh, maybe that would be also um, the difference between Icelandic pirates and, and pirates elsewhere is that the broad range of issues, there is no limit to uh, what we might be interested in to to put uh, as, as an issue that we would like the government to to handle or handle ourselves if we become the government. So this is ranging from uh, economic policies to fisheries policies down to copyright uh, reform and uh, maybe there was even a, a one uh, 
request that we got was to make an issue and vote on uh, this kind of mult, like a home inside uh, people's houses. It's, it's, it's a problem in Iceland because houses are heavily insulated because of the difficult weather and uh, this becomes a problem with uh, moisture and moisture is of course where, where the mildew is, is growing. So we worked for a few weeks on this and got some experts to uh, tell us about this and, and now we have, a, have a, a uh, the first Icelandic uh, political policy about how to deal with mildew in people's houses. So it's ranging from the small to the large. Um, yeah. And uh, so recently we have uh, been uh, thinking about economic uh, policy and fisheries policy, energy policy, health care policy, and we are working on uh, general welfare policy and uh, settlement or regional policy. It's, it's, uh, uh, even if it's a small country with only uh, 300,000 people, uh, we are kind of distributed all over the island, small communities which are kind of dying slowly and should the regional policy include uh, supporting them um, financially and how much and how long, so when, when is enough enough. So this is what we are discussing at the moment. And of course, uh, another thing is that, uh, okay, I'm ahead of myself now. I was going to tell you about the, <coughs> the polls in 2014. We started to rise in the, in the opinion polls of, of Icelandic people. So, uh, for ranging from uh, maybe 2% of the population who wanted to vote us, vote the pirates, it uh, increased and increased until it was 37%. I think that was the highest. 37% of Icelanders one month said that they would vote for the Pirate Party. And this has caused a lot of speculation because we have only three senators out of 61. And uh, yeah, so why are people liking us so much? And there are some theories that uh, they don't really like us that much, that uh, they just dislike the others even more. So uh, the others are, are, the, are the four normal uh, political parties, uh, left, right, uh, progressive and uh, green. They have never really delivered, that's what people are saying, uh, I'm not going to say my opinion on it. They have never really delivered everything that they have promised and they keep promising things and not delivering for all kinds of reasons. So they are promising bridges over there, tunnels through mountains and, uh, and stability and then there is a crash and there is a tunnel that leaks water and all kinds of uh, problems with these uh, old uh, political parties, so that might be one reason why pirate party sounds fresh and interesting. Another reason is that these three pirates who, that are in the parliament, they have been doing very well. They have not uh, had the power to change very much, but when they are asked about issues, they answer very uh, precisely and, uh, and, and, and they have good concrete answers and they base all their answers, as far as I know, on the six basic principles that we have uh, set for the Icelandic Pirate Party. Uh, so they are transparency, they are freedom of expression, freedom of information, uh, freedom of self-preservation uh, or self-promotion. Uh, yeah. What did you say? Self-governance, self yes, and then uh, direct governance. Uh, I think there's one missing there, but uh, well. Um, so they, these are the basics of all the answers that, uh, that they uh, are, gi are giving. And these are also the basis of all the policies. So we cannot really put a, um, together a policy which uh, is about economic issues or mildew in houses unless it's based on these uh, six uh, basic uh, principles. And then, of course, we also have the pirate code, which, which maybe you know, it, and it says that we should be you know, healthy and, and international and happy and, and so on. Uh, good people, that's really pretty much what it says. <clears throat> so, uh, we are now down to uh, maybe 27% uh, in the polls, uh, still above the Conservative Party, which has traditionally had the most of the 
most belief of Icelandic people. So we are hoping uh, that uh, in the coming elections, which should be now soon in October, perhaps at least that's the date when they have that they have mentioned. We are hoping that we will get. Uh, Above 20, let's be uh, not too optimistic, above 20% of the votes. So that means that we would get maybe 10 to 15 persons into the parliament and we could uh, either um, join uh, with some other political party uh, to govern Iceland uh, in, the, in the government or we could be a, a large minority in the Parliament and kind of control what happens and what goes through. So this has not been decided precisely yet. Since uh, since also well, well another thing is that we were supposed to have the general election for Parliament uh, next year according to calendars, but uh, after the Panama Papers came out, people started uh, noticing that our prime ministers and several other ministers have had uh, accounts in, the, in Panama and, uh, and they were actually just lying flat out about it, just denying and not saying and, and uh, yeah, so people started protesting outside of the parliament uh, in spring and uh, we got uh, like a large percentage, 15 to 16 percent of the p people st standing out there banging drums and shouting at the, at the at the house, sometimes the house was empty, but still people were there. And uh, we also had nice weather at the time, that was also... <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, the current political uh, government, they decided that it would maybe be best to, to fast forward the, the election for, for parliament. And uh, right now they say at the end of October, if they manage to pull, put, push enough of their own issues through Parliament. So they are trying to get a stranglehold on the minorities in the, in, the, in the Parliament and of course that won't work if they are going to try to push through some uh, impossible uh, laws which, which, are not, which cannot be accepted then of course the, the other parties are not going to allow it even if it would speed up the elections. So, <clears throat> according to the, uh, the polls within Pirates, uh, uh, the first issue that we would like to see is the new constitution. The Icelandic constitution was a temporary one. Uh, it was set in, uh, when we got our independence from the Danish in uh, 1944. And it was based 99% uh, on the Danish constitution, which was then... Uh, uh, well, they had their, their, their power from the king, uh, but we took out the king and put president and, and you know, so, some very simple uh, changes. And we are still using this uh, same constitution and we think, many of us think that this is way too old and not modern enough. It does not include the large chapters of the international uh, uh, human rights uh, issues and uh, so on. And, and one other thing is that uh, after the economic crash in 2008, which uh, probably everybody knows about, Iceland, uh, we, we found out that Iceland was, you know, the banks that had been uh, building up all over Europe, they were doing it with less than nothing. It was all borrowed fame and they didn't really have anything to build on. And, and uh, after the crash, it became evident that the state was responsible for paying uh, money back and people, actually taxpayers, had to pay this back uh, slowly and we are still doing that. I think it's the largest uh, account in the, in the budget is, is just interest on payments, on loans that have gone to pay all kinds of debts of those uh, Vikings, those uh, economic Vikings that were um, promising the, the future based on borrowed time, borrowed money. So after the crash, uh, very many persons uh, like me we started to think, why is this happening? What is, ha what is wrong? And we, many of us got to the same conclusion, that the constitution must be wrong. You know, if you have the basic of the base of the house, uh, it's not steady, then the house will all be skewed and it will be 
possibly uh, falling apart. So we wanted a new constitution and we, there was an election about this and 30 persons were elected uh, to make a new constitution for Iceland. That was in 2010, I think, or maybe 2009. And in 2011, it was ready. We have a new constitution ready, a draft. And in 2012, it was still ready. And in 2014, we had a new parliamentary election. And the old political parties, the conservatives and the progressives, that actually were in power mainly before the crash, they got back into power. And they had just put this new idea for constitutions into the drawer, and it's still there. So this will be the first act of pirates if we have any power to, to start working on getting the new constitution out for general voting because there is nothing to wait for. It's, it was very democratically uh, built and made and, uh, and it should be voted on democratically. In the, uh, perhaps people in Iceland will uh, refuse it, so then at least we will have the democratic decision about it and not just put it somewhere behind the, well, in the drawer. Um, well, and one of the things that the, this new constitution will bring is more direct uh, uh, voting and, uh, and polls and, and people can have a more difference uh, between the four years of choosing the government uh, in, on, in all kinds of ways. And another one is that uh, it will tell uh, the it will state that the natural resources, fish and energy and air and all other resources in Iceland belong to the people and are not uh, under any other ownership which, it's, which they seem to be now. You know, it, there, is no, there is nowhere that says that fish and the sea are, are not the ownership of the people. Uh, and, and that uh, the economic gains from fishing should not go to the people, but for some reason companies, corporations, have been able to gain uh, huge amounts of, of, of money from uh, fisheries and paying less than, uh, well, I think it was 2 to 3 percent of this, uh, these uh, overall gains to society. And I mentioned Panama earlier, guess where the rest of the money is going, I guess. Um, uh, we want uh, uh, the, the new constitution and then we will be able to set uh, full laws that say that they should pay tax, uh, uh, whatever you call it, some kind of uh, resource tax or, or whatever you call it. Um, and society will gain from that. And the reason why I'm talking about this is that this is the money that we hope to use for basic income in Iceland in future. And uh, so if you look at the numbers here, 330,000 I think was uh, another number because it depends if you talk about the, the yearly population or the census that was made in 2011 end of 2011, then it was closer to 320,000. So many people seem to be uh, counted uh, living in Iceland, even if they are not living there anymore. Uh, 18 plus population, that would be the population that would get, uh, have the rights to a basic income. Uh, it could also be 16 plus, because 16 year olds can be taxed if they are earning something. So, but anyway, there is a number, 250,000 persons are plus 18. The GDP is about 1,800 to 2,000 billion Icelandic crowns. Um, the Icelandic crown, uh, you need 145, I think, Icelandic crowns to have one euro. So you can do the calculations in your head. <laughs> But these are kind of round nice numbers. The 1800 billion was in 2014, the last year when uh, where the Statistics Iceland has a, a proper overall view of the economy. 
and uh, but we are guessing that 2,000 billion should be the, uh, or close to 2,000 billion is the status of the GDP today. The government uh, income and expenditure every year is around half of this. It's been like that for uh, several uh, years, so we expect it to be similar. And uh, the social payments, all payments directly to persons in Iceland, uh, whether they are unemployed, handicapped, old uh, pensioners, or, or, or people with families, or, 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 or all kinds of partial stipendi also, uh, they are uh, <coughs> roughly a little bit below uh, one third of the of the government uh, expenses. So, and if you include other payments to uh, to individuals that the government is paying, for instance, uh, student loans, they are kind of direct payments, and uh, and uh, help to farmers and help to all kinds of uh, industries that go directly to persons. Then this uh, figure goes uh, up maybe 30 more billion, so it's almost one third of the Icelandic budget is going directly to people. And these are not the government staff. Uh, lowest salaries are now, so now we get into another uh, figure. Uh, they, so these are the overall here, and the lowest salaries they are 160 to 170,000, isn't that like uh, per, per month? Um, I don't know if that's 2,500 euros maybe per month. It's a little bit over 1,000 euros. A little bit over 1,000, yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, the calculated minimum income uh, from the welfare uh, ministry is around, uh, well, 200 to 250,000, depending on uh, if, how many children the person has and, and where they live, Reykjavik area or outside. <coughs> and uh, so this is uh, my I own idea that uh, possible basic income, according to what data we have now, should be where the lowest salaries are because well uh, it should not be a, uh, it should be a safety net but not um, uh, not uh, you know not more than the highest uh, than the lowest salaries so if you, if you get well I, I will get more into that a little bit later uh, this one yeah Mm -hmm. And from this they have to pay tax, which is, uh, uh, in, uh, in general it's 38%, uh, but there is also a, a little bit of uh, tax discount, which I will show here. Um, uh, well, if you go to the third line here, that everyone has a personal tax credit scheme. That was the name that they use. So it's tax deduction. So that's around 70,000 crowns per month. Uh, and this is uh, something that we pirates have been thinking about uh, using as a, as a kind of building up our uh, idea for basic income. So we have already put uh, or, or, or agreed on a policy that people who do not use their tax dis deduction uh, of 70,000, maybe they live with their parents or, or, or whatever, if they don't have any salary, they should still have a right to get this, uh, this personal uh, credit scheme. And uh, if they are not using it, they should get it paid. That's one of our policies. Uh, so we would like uh, yeah, people who are not using their tax credit to get it paid. It's kind of simple. <coughs> and then uh, we are proposing that uh, this tax uh, credit should be uh, raised slowly. 
uh, you know, as, uh, as fast as we can. You know, we have to incorporate the new constitution. We have to gain money from the from the natural resources, fishing and energy usage, and so on. Uh, so this is nothing that's going to happen overnight. But uh, if we can ra raise it slowly, then we would uh, slowly. Uh, what was I going to say? We would slowly get closer to the limit of the basic income, which is some calculation that has to be done every year or maybe many times a year. And this would be in effect, uh, if, if this goes through, then this tax credit, uh, when it reaches the basic income level, we will have the negative income tax. It's, it's pretty much the same thing. So, so that's, this is our uh, basic idea of how to uh, raise, or how to approach the basic income idea. But uh, we also, in addition to this, th this is kind of, um, we, we thought of it as a sneaky way to introduce basic income. And of course, that's not how we want to do it. We want to, we want to propose it uh, and have it a transparent idea. Uh, so we have also been thinking about proposing um, a test, really very similar to what you are uh, thinking here in Finland. But uh, perhaps we would go with uh, one region, which is uh, kind of uh, in the north here. Up there, it's Akureyri area. Uh, this has not been decided in any way. These are ideas that have been floating around, so you cannot really quote this too much, I think. But uh, Akureyri idea ha area, which is kind of an isolated labor area, people don't drive too much uh, to the other towns around because there are mountains around it. And they have the, um, a good mixture of labor and incomes. They have the hospitals, they have the, the different types of schools, they have a university. So we could uh, perhaps uh, make very uh, get good measurements of the from this area oh yes yeah so here is the accurate area i was going to propose like a normal person my own hometown here which also has 20000 persons and uh, you know it's kind of close to the Reykjavik area but uh, <coughs> political parties in my hometown, they have mumped up very badly. They have gone uh, several billions into minus by taking loans to pay the streets and they have sold out the, the school buildings. They, they have been privatizing according to the, Milton Fri uh, the other Milton Friedman idea. Of course, Milton Friedman also had the idea of negative income tax. But uh, so, so my hometown is, uh, yeah, it's in deep shit. It has to pay lots of uh, debt. So it would not be, be a good measurement for, <laughs> for anything really <laughs> in the future. So, but uh, I think this area here would be a good study area. There are also good uh, small sized towns here. Of course, it's all small sized town in, in Iceland. Um, but anyway, this would be my, uh, since I studied geography here in Finland, I studied locational analysis and, and so on, and my analysis tells me that this would be a good, uh, good place and it would be worth checking and discussing, even if there is no uh, formal decision about this so far. <coughs> and I was happy to hear that uh, the, uh, the, the, from um, who, the, the Keller guy who was here before, forgot his name. Yes, uh, that uh, there are good ideas of how to analyze this kind of uh, experiment because that's what has to be done also wherever it's done. <coughs> and uh, so here is another one of my personal ideas. I have, I have uh, been showing this around the, with the pirates is that uh, uh, the government expenditure scenario in 2014 it included infrastructure uh, well uh, 
largest part of the budget goes to infrastructure, healthcare, education, culture, government, and uh, security. And uh, social aid, basic income, that was the 250 uh, billion Icelandic crowns here. And then we have a little bit of housing support, a little bit of uh, actually quite much uh, support to industrial activities. And then uh, research and development, religion gets a uh, nice 6 billion from the Icelandic government. And uh, environment, uh, can we see it? Yes, it's here. It's, uh, they get, uh, it was 10 billion Icelandic. And then foreign affairs, embassy in, in Helsinki and so on. They get this kind of sum here. Um, we are now preparing uh, for the pirates uh, some kind of future ideas. So, and these will uh, be uh, voted on before the election within our uh, pirate voting system. <coughs> and, uh, uh, well, basically this, they, they, we have thought that it would be a 10-year plan, but I wanted to be a little bit bolder for this presentation and say that in, uh, in, in, in maybe 20 years' time, we want to have gone quite far, pirate party or not. It doesn't really matter who does it, they work as long as it gets done. We would like to have a basic income here, which was uh, much, uh, almost as large as the infrastructure, which is the welfare uh, state uh, costs. <coughs> and we would like to increase, include, uh, increase housing support, because basic income <coughs> does not really so solve all the housing problems. And in Iceland, we have an almost no uh, rental uh, housing market. For some reason, the government in the last 20 years has, has uh, been very fond of the idea of private ownership of housing. So um, there is almost no rental market. And trying to get, and because it's so small, when you try to get a, a, an apartment rented, it doesn't matter where it is in the country, you always pay very high city prices. And that's not correct. Of course, a healthy markets should let the individuals choose if they want to invest or just rent. And, and that would be the, the way that, uh, that uh, well, for instance, Finland does it. And then we would like to uh, reduce our, the government support of industries and activities. Uh, maybe increase a little bit the research and development. Religion should go from 6 billion to zero, if I would have my say. Because this 6 billion, that's really the cost of having uh, the free health care, basic health care for all Icelandic citizens. It's been, somebody was calculating earlier this year and, and putting it into the Icelandic papers that he calculated that, that according to how many people are visiting the hospitals and how much each visit costs on the, on the average, that it would be six billion. And that's exactly how much the church is getting. So, uh, very simple idea, of, but of course it would need some time to, well, let's say 20 years to realize. Environment should, uh, I don't know if it should get more uh, or less, so, uh, and uh, then foreign affairs, I don't know uh, if it should get more or less. Uh, but anyway, main thing is that in the future we want to have a basic income scheme. And of course, this is, uh, my, these are my ideas, they are not, uh, my graphs, I mean. So, the, but they are in accordance with the basic uh, ideas that are being worked at in the Pirate Party in Iceland. So, in the, to, to conclude, well, this is just my abstract. Um, I have actually said everything without uh, knowing that I was where I was. Um, yes, I will. I will. Uh, yeah, I have already told you all my conclusions. So I will go on with the recommendations to other pirates. Since we are so big, we think we can recommend something to others. 
And that's uh, basically what you learn from the Jack Sparrow movies, just be bold, look beyond the horizon, you know, set your goals, set your, uh, your policies, set them both near and far because uh, full basic income scheme is uh, like it was proposed uh, um, well, it has, has been called a utopia. I mean, so, but why not aim to go there? It, does, it doesn't have, have to happen over five years or two years. It happens in 20 years or more. And it happens in small steps. And our steps will include this tax deduction scheme, hopefully. Of course, it depends on other political parties that we have to work with. And uh, we also, yeah, we want to... Uh, uh, reduce the cost of living with uh, for Icelandic people by having the free health care. So I mean, they, they are all steps in the same direction, and uh, small baby steps. And to end, I would like to. I did not remember to put the picture that I have drawn, but I will have to show you with my hands. If you know how the um, the welfare uh, safety net works, it's a net that everybody can fall into and not hurt themselves on the ground. Can you see it in your mind? <laughs> but this net has gaps in it. We know that. Some people are falling through the net. They fall into them and then they roll through the gaps or, or whatever. Then they are the people that we are worried about. And we don't know how many people they are. And some people survive even if they hit the ground uh, kind of hard. And, uh, but uh, in the future, uh, well, what I would propose is that the basic income scheme uh, it uh, comes instead of the safety net and it becomes like a safety harness from above so that nobody will have to fall into the net. The net will be basically uh, unnecessary because everybody will have, you know, when we are dancing on the line, which is life, like in the circus. Uh, instead of having a net which might fail, to have a support that everybody should get from the government. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Albert Svansigurdsson.